Washington State has a proud history of being leaders in fish culture. We have uh, some of the most incredible access to some of the most incredible fish on the planet. Having the opportunity to catch these fish is a once in a lifetime experience because not everybody can catch them. We're pretty fortunate to have them here. Between 50 and 90 percent of the fish that are caught almost anywhere in the Northwest are hatchery produced. Hatcheries right now maintain our way of life. Without hatcheries, there's virtually no opportunity to harvest. Federal, state, and tribal hatcheries release millions of fish annually that provide harvest for recreational, commercial, and tribal fishers. Hatchery salmon, however, can have a negative impact on wild salmon. We need to minimize you know, large amounts of hatchery fish in the wild because we don't want to swamp the genetic characteristics of the wild fish. So the question has always been, can we have hatcheries for the, for the benefit they produce while reducing the impacts on natural origin fish. After certain populations of fish were diminished to the point that they were listed as threatened or endangered under the Endangered Species Act, there started to be a lot more focus to protecting those native populations. In the late 1990s, Congress said, we think you should be studying this, and gave money to the state of Washington to convene a group of scientists and come up with a set of recommendations. Hatchery fish are produced and they're mass marked, so we can tell that they're a hatchery fish and not interfere with the wild stocks. In harvest, we are using more selective fisheries. Fish in Washington state, most of them are adipose fin clipped to determine that they're hatchery fish. So you can have selective fisheries on those fish as they return. So you're not affecting the, the wild stocks as greatly as it has in the past. With the ability to identify hatchery fish from wild fish, we can use traps and weirs to be able to separate those fish and take the hatchery fish off the spawning grounds. That's one of the most important things we do. So a lot of our hatcheries are um, integrating wild stocks into our hatchery programs to make them more wildlike. The value of taking these fish into the hatchery is that you can greatly increase the number of fish that you produce and release. There's about 10% of the eggs that survive in the wild uh, and about 90 some percent survive in the hatcheries. Now a lot of people say, well, those are eggs that should not have survived to become fish. But in fact, a great majority of those eggs were perfect to survive. It's just they were swamped with silt that had washed in from potential logging areas, agricultural areas, or other reasons like that. If we're serious about having thriving hatchery fisheries and healthy wild fish populations, then we need to implement effective habitat protection and restoration, and we need excellent fisheries and hatchery management. Hatcheries are important for just maintaining the quality of life that we have in the Pacific Northwest. Um, not only do hatcheries provide great salmon to our dinner tables and to our restaurants, and they help preserve a culturally important and iconic species, but they're absolutely vital for balancing the other benefits that we try to get out of our streams and rivers and shorelines. What's exciting about salmon is when you work in the hatchery, you're producing a live product and you're releasing that live product and you see the, the fruits of your labor when those fish return um, to the hatchery and into the fishery and provide benefit to all the citizens of the state of Washington. Hatcheries we're going to have to continue to use and fund and operate if we're going to continue to see salmon and salmon fishing seasons in Washington and along the whole coast. We know hatchery fish negatively impact wild fish, and we know what to do. And implementing hatchery reform is a key critical step to ensure that we have wild fish and fisheries in the future.